you guys, it's Summer, and today's video is a little bit different than the type of videos I guess I normally make, but I've been really wanting to make this video for a while. In fact, I've actually filmed this two times before over the last couple months and deleted it because it's so hard to get everything I want to say into the video um, and, and have, I don't know, it's just been, it's a hard video to make. And the whole thing I wanted to talk about was my struggles with anxiety. And every time I've even mentioned anxiety or if I write about it on my blog or if I talk about a book or some something about anxiety on my YouTube channel or my blog, I just get so many emails and so many comments from people that are really struggling and just want comfort or advice um, and want to know kind of what I've gone through and how I got through it. And it's hard to share my story because the thing is with anxiety, it's so different for everybody. The feeling may be the same, but what's causing the anxiety, it it's, could be different with every person. And so I want to share kind of what I've gone through, but just know that my what I have found to be the cause of anxiety for me might be different for you, but I really, really do encourage you guys to, you know, go to a good doctor, find a really good doctor, get really good blood work done, check everything, everything, because a lot of times there's something more going on and your body is telling you that you, you need help, that you need balance. And it could be in your brain, it could be in your body, but do your research and don't, don't give up. I guess that's like, if I, if you stop the video now, just know, don't give up. It will get better. It can get better. And there is hope. And that is the thing I think that was hardest for me when I was struggling with anxiety is that I really had no hope for a long time. I didn't think that I would ever get better. I didn't think I would ever get back to who I was and who I knew God had created me to be. And it, I think that was the thing that was really hard. Not the one thing. There's like a thousand things that are really hard about anxiety. But it's that it, it took, it robbed me of who I was. I was never a person that struggled with worry. I'm not a big worrier. I mean, I do worry sometimes, but it, I'm not obsessively worrying about things. And I'm not a nervous person normally. I love to be around people. I love to be alone, but I really love to be around people too. And so um, when the anxiety hit, I didn't want to be around anybody. I didn't want to eat, which is really weird because I love to eat. I couldn't eat, actually. It was like I couldn't get food down. It's the weirdest thing. I mean, Jimmy would have to go get me Jamba Juice during every single day because I couldn't, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to eat anything. I'd sip water all day. Okay, so I'm getting ahead of myself. This is why I keep filming this because I just start rambling and I want to tell you everything and I, I just don't think I'll be able to get it into one video, but I'll do my best to, to give you the overall story. So, um, my first experience with anxiety was when my dad died. He died suddenly of a heart attack when I was 21 or 22, and it was just devastating. The events that happened after he died were traumatic and devastating as well, and when I got back home from that, I remember sitting in a movie theater and just feeling my heart race and feeling kind of sweaty and like the room was closing in on me. Um... And that was my first experience with anxiety. Well, at the time, I didn't know it was anxiety. I just thought I was losing it. But um, but I was able to kind of get over it quickly. I never needed medication. I never even considered medication. And it wasn't until after I had my son, my, my firstborn child, that I had postpartum depression with him. And it was definitely more depression than anxiety. I was crying a lot. I found myself like feeling really edgy, like not like, hey, I'm pretty edgy, but like I just was like my mood, I was, I was on edge. And that over time of not being treated and not being addressed continued to get worse. 
then when he, and he was a tough child, I mean, he had colic, he just, he never stopped crying, didn't sleep well, there's just a lot of stuff, we were all tired, it was a rough, rough time. But what really triggered it and sent me into the depths of anxiety was when my grandpa had cancer for years and years, but when he was at the end of his life, I flew home to visit and spent the week caring for him with my sisters and my aunts and my mom. And it was just living in a house day in and day out with death. I just don't know how people do this as a job and care for people on their deathbed. It's like unbelievable to me. But while I was there, it was amazing. But when I got home and the day that I got the call that he died, I had my first insane panic attack. It was so bad. I couldn't breathe. I was down on all fours. I was crying. I just told you, man, I don't know what's wrong with me. And you take me to the hospital. I just thought I was losing it. I thought I was either having a heart attack or I was losing my mind or both. And I couldn't sleep. I never got to sleep that night. And finally the next day I went to urgent care and that's when they said, you're having panic attacks. Here's some Xanax and get some sleep. And that was it. That's how they diagnosed me and how they treated me. And that was, there were no tools. There was like, take care of yourself. Here's Xanax. And I went home. So it just didn't get better. I was having to take Xanax every four hours and it was enough to get me through the day, but the days were long and they were painful and it was like I was being tortured emotionally and physically even. I wasn't sleeping very well. I wasn't eating. I didn't know how to care for my son. He watched so much TV during that time. Jimmy was lost. At first he was very... Um, comforting and very supportive, but after a couple weeks, after probably close to a month of me having to take Xanax every day, of no, the Xanax was, took the edge off and it helped me to survive it, but I wasn't surviving. I was miserable. And I don't know how to explain anxiety if you guys have never had it. If you've probably never had it, you're probably not even watching this anymore. But it feels like that feeling where, you know where you think you hear a noise and you get really scared and you're like on high alert and you have that like panicked feeling. It's like that all the time, but for no reason. For no reason. And there's nothing you can do to get rid of it. You can't think yourself into a better place. At least I couldn't. So after about a month of this torture of not sleeping, of not eating, of feeling restless and I, it was so dark. Like those were the darkest, worst days of my life. Worst days of my life. I just can't even, if you walked it, you know what I'm talking about. What got me through it? The Xanax helped. Um, Jimmy helped. He was, even though he got frustrated at times, he never judged me. He never made me feel crazy or he just would hug me and hold me and pray with me and that is the ultimate thing that got me through those days was my relationship with the Lord and every single day I was reading my Bible I was having people pray with me I was praying myself I was I had a support group it was very very small I only told a handful of people maybe two handfuls of people and they were incredible. They checked in with me all the time. They would come over and just sit with me and pray with me, bring me Jamba Juice. And I had a list of scriptures that different people had given me or that I'd come across while I was doing my devotions or while I was reading my Bible. And in my really, really hard moments, I would just read those scriptures out loud over and over and over again. It would calm me. It would give me hope. And if I didn't have that, I don't know, I don't know how I would have made it through. I had a couple songs that really spoke to me. There's one by a band called Super Chick, He Will Bring Beauty From My Pain. And another one by J.J. Heller, um, Have Mercy On Me. Those two songs were lifelines for me during that time. So eventually, 
I realized I couldn't live on Xanax. I went to the doctor again and I was prescribed an antidepressant. And the one that they gave me was Lexapro and it was terrible in the first couple weeks. I almost felt like it made me worse, but then I felt a calm one day. And it's not like I felt high or weird or different. I just felt like I was slowly having less bad days and more good days. And it would be one good day and three bad days and then a good day. But eventually, over a couple months, I was having more good days and less bad days. Okay, this is getting really long. <laughs> and um, let's see how I can wrap this up. This went on for years. I took my antidepressant for years. I still had moments of anxiety. I never really had panic attacks, but I definitely still struggled with anxiety. And so a few years later, I went back to, or I started going to an integrative doctor. And as I was going to her, we were trying to work out stuff with my um, bilirubin levels. That's originally why I went to her. But she started having me do blood work. She realized that I was consistently low in progesterone, like every single time I, I got blood work done, which was every month basically for a long time. And she, one day when she saw that this was continually happening, she's like, this might be why you're struggling with anxiety. It's because when you don't have progesterone in your body, that's one of the side effects. And so we tried different supplements, different diet changes to see if that would change. Nothing changed. And so eventually she suggested that I try um, going on bioidentical hormones, which is crazy. I'm in my mid-30s, that I would already maybe be in perimenopause, whatever. I don't want to put a label on it, but I was low in progesterone. And the day... I started taking it, well, I'm probably not, I'm being dramatic, middle child syndrome here. A few days after I started taking progesterone, I was still on my antidepressants, but I already felt better. Like the little bit of anxiety that I was still fighting seemed to be gone. So I took progesterone and my antidepressant for a good year, maybe longer, and my doctor was really encouraging me to try to go off of my antidepressants but I didn't want to. I was I had settled in my mind that that antidepressant was a gift from Jesus and I was going to take it until the day I died because I never ever ever wanted to go back to that place of anxiety. And um, I felt like I had antidepressant, I had my progesterone and I was good. I was not going off. But as God would have it, but I went on a missions trip to the Dominican with my son and I forgot my antidepressants. And you're not really supposed to go off of those. You're not. Don't ever just go off your antidepressant. But I had no choice. I was off of it for a week, and I had no side effects, really. I mean, I didn't have any return of anxiety. I had some physical side effects. But um, I just realized that maybe my progesterone is actually doing the work it's supposed to be doing. So when I got home from my trip, I decided to, with my doctor, slowly, slowly, slowly begin weaning off my antidepressant. And by slowly, I mean like slivers. I mean like quarters of the pill over months. And thankfully, I have not had any anxiety since going off. I've been off of it now for a year. I'm still on my same dose of progesterone. We've also figured out that I have um, a low T, I think I have T3 resistance. I think that's what it's called, um, which is a thyroid thing. And then I also have, I'm like a long laundry list of things, but I have a thing called MTHFR mutation. I have both numbers, thing, letters. And so all of that probably contribute to the anxiety, but I really do think that the big part of it was the progesterone. And so now I cling to that little progesterone pill, like that is my gift from Jesus. But, um, so this is my very long, shortened version. Um, I had moments, even on my antidepressants, not moments, weeks sometimes, where anxiety would surface, and it would be really bad. And I would just think, really, am I never going to be without this? And I had to resolve in my mind that if I never was ever completely without it, when I had those moments, I tried to thank the Lord because in those times I felt the closest to the Lord.
the closest I have ever been to God were in the darkest times of my life. It sucks that it has to be that way. It doesn't have to be that way, I guess, but it was for me. Yeah, every time I film this, I don't know how to wrap this up, and I feel like there needs to be a part two. So I guess what I'm going to do is just end here and let you guys ask whatever questions you have in either the comments below or you can email me. And maybe what I'll do is I'll collect all of your guys' questions and do a part two to this so that I can specifically answer whatever lingering things you have. If you're struggling and you want that, I have saved that list of verses that really spoke to me. I am happy to email that to you. So if you'd like a list of that, let me know. Um, and yeah, I hope I, I know when I finish this video, I'm going to think, why didn't I say this? Why didn't I say that? But I cannot film this another time. This is my third attempt and I'm done. I'm, I'm posting this video. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. I just want to let you know that if you're in the middle of this, if you've been struggling with this for years, whether it's been years, a month, a week, I want you to know that you are not alone and that I am here for you. I am always here for you. If you need to email me, um, summer at lemusiansofmoi.com. And I think that's the biggest thing when we're going through this is that we just want to feel loved and feel accepted and know that we aren't alone. And so I hope that you know that. I hope that this video helps you know that. And if there's anything else I can do to help you in this time of your life or in this struggle, let me know. Um, and so thank you guys for watching and thank you for being a part of my life and for letting me into your lives. It has been such a blessing to me. You just don't, you just don't even know. All right. I'll talk to you guys soon.